and it could have been the story of mine. And I tell a lot of people, people go, what's your biggest fear in life? And my biggest fear, honestly, was, let's say this, let's say, uh, I don't care if you believe in God or not, I don't care. So this, this is play a game with me. Let's say, let's say you're God. And we have a big fucking long line of people. And I made to heaven, I'm 75 years old, I'm 300 pounds, I made to heaven, I worked for Ecolab my entire life, spraying for cockroaches, that's what I did. But I'm dead, I'm in heaven now. And you are at, you're, you're judging us all now. So we're in line, we're all sitting there in line. And you have Adam Brown, he has a big board up and you're talking to Adam Brown about his life. And you rip it down and I'm next in line, David Goggins. I see my name and I see all this shit and God goes, hey, you say, read this, man. And I'm reading this list and I'm seeing 182 pounds, Navy SEAL, Ranger School, motivational speaker, changing lives. Okay, man, pull up record, all this shit. And I'm like, that's not me, man. And God looks at me and says, that's who you were supposed to be. And my biggest fear, I, I visualize some crazy shit. My biggest fear is that one day I'm gonna reach a judgment of my life. Someone, something's gonna judge me for what the fuck I was supposed to be in life. And what I want now is that whoever's judged me, whatever's judged me up there, I want them to have a board and them up there right now getting their pen out. Because you know, this person who judges you is supposed to know everything. You're supposed to know from the time you're dead to the time you're, you know, you know, time you're born, time you're dead. I want this person to be up there to be like this, up there writing more about me, saying, fuck, I know you I know you can do that. I I know you can do that. So I wanna impress whatever the fuck is up there, whatever's going on in life, I wanna go up there and not have anything left on the table. I wanna I wanna drain my soul of every fucking bit of person I am. So I put the same work ethic into my learning as I did in the swimming. A few months later, I was swimming. And then I go off to pararescue school. So my whole thing was I wanted, the, the military was my way to find self-esteem. I had to start building on something, you know, and I started building on, you know, education. Then I had to start learning how to find mental toughness. And this is where I started finding was, was in the military. But once again, God through whenever life would start getting good for me, God would throw a nice anchor and stop me right there. So I'm going through pararescue training and there's this evolution called water confidence. And water confidence is pretty much what gets people kicked out of special, you know, special forces, special operations is the water. And they try to drown you, pretty much. This was not in the warning order, so I didn't know anything about water confidence. Long story short, what it is, is they put 16 pound weight belts on you, whatever they can do to make you uncomfortable in the water. So for six weeks of a 10 week program, I became very uncomfortable. We got down to about 25, 30 guys left. I was one of them. And getting near graduation of this program, I'm thinking, my God, I'm about to get through this. Barely though, water confidence is killing me. They took me to medical, they, they, they drew my blood and realized I have sickle cell. So sickle cell is a blood disease that sure. some African Americans have which is not good so they took me out training for a week and when you go from being uncomfortable that's your lifestyle you get used to being uncomfortable when you go back to being comfortable your mind says i don't want to go back to sure. being uncomfortable again so i was like i don't want to go back to the water so my whole mindset was i want to get out of this training so i was hoping that they were going to medically disqualify me from pararescue program that didn't happen a week later the doc called me in the office and said hey guess what man we're gonna put you back in the training I was like, okay, well, I missed a week. I got about two and a half weeks left. I can do this. I went back to the, you know, to the CEO, the command officer. He said, hey, guess what? We're going to start you back from day one. And when he said that to me, my mind went back to the old David Goggins. So I thought I had changed. Learning, learning how to swim, learning how to read and write. All I was doing was attacking the surface. I wasn't getting down into the dungeon of what was really bothering me. So whenever like, like, tough times would happen, any tough time that would, like really tough time that would happen, I would go back to the sewer of my mind. So this happened, I went back to Lion. I said, hey, you know what, CEO? This guy, you know, the doc didn't know about sickle cell. He didn't give me a good reason why. He's talking about sudden death, heart attack, stroke. I'm not comfortable. So he gave me a medical from pararescue. So he allowed me to leave, but I, I really quit. I didn't want to go back in the water again. 
And that's when I went from weighing 175 pounds to 297 in about three and a half years. So I did a job called TACP, yeah. controlling fast movers behind enemy lines. But that job wasn't a job that I wanted. And the spiral of depression, of trying to find things that I was comfortable doing. And whenever you find things that you're comfortable doing, you're going away from the journey of life. And I was going so far away from my journey that my weight showed my whole mindset. The most important conversation you'll ever have is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, eventually you'll act on it. And my self-talk was the most disgusting self-talk of all time. So the sewer of my mind, like I said, you have to go back in there and fix things. A lot of us are afraid, like right now, 20 years ago, you wouldn't find me on this show. I was too embarrassed to tell you I stuttered, I lied. All these different things, getting beat up, getting bullied, whatever happened. But that's where the true transformation starts to happen. I don't really like those words. Self-help or self-management or self-improvement. I don't really like what those words have come to mean these days. Because there's a, a lot of people out there that are constantly trying to improve themselves by looking for the one change. The one change, right? The one change in their life that's going to make their dreams come true. And even worse, on top of that, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of self-help gurus and these hyperactive motivational speakers and these other self-appointed modern Zen yoga warriors that they're trying to sell the one thing. They're trying to sell the nine steps or the enlightened path that's going to allow you to unlock all of your human potential and fulfill the dreams so you can live the life that you've, you've always wanted to live. Now, I'm no guru. And I definitely don't claim to be. I'm just a man. But I will tell you this. It isn't one thing. And it isn't 10 things and it isn't a hundred things. It isn't a quick path and there are no shortcuts. Meditation won't get you there and neither will a miracle drug or an organic supplement or some superfood. Getting better isn't a hack or a trick or a one change that you need to make. Getting better is a campaign. It's a campaign. It's a daily, a weekly, it's an hourly fight.